I had such great success doing my 36 hour corned beef using sous vide to cook it that I decided I'm gonna try it out with a sirloin tip roast. So this time I'm gonna change up a few things from my test recipe. So let's see if the results are just as perfect. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today I'm gonna make something that is very easy to make, but it does take a long time, okay? I'm gonna sous vide a sirloin tip roast. The cook time is going to be 36 hours. Now I've already tested this recipe with my standalone Anova sous vide cooker, so I know it works perfectly there. What I don't know is how well it's gonna work using the sous vide function on the Ninja Foodie. And also I'm gonna make one other change and that's what we're gonna get into right now. So what I noticed after 36 hours in the sous vide cooker, which was my ANOVA in a big uh, pan of water, is that the outside of the roast beef was just a little soft. And so when I went to pick it up, I was actually like pulling off the seasoning some. So I got to thinking, what if I sear the seasonings on before I even sous vide cook. Now it's not gonna be like a crust or anything like that because obviously over the 36 hours in the sous vide, it's going to soften. But I'm just gonna see if that gives any difference in the texture. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the Ninja Foodie on, turn the sear saute on high, hit start, and I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in the inner pot. While that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and season up my sirloin tip roast. So this is about, I think it's just under five pounds. So anywhere between four and a half, five pounds is fine. And I'm using just salt and pepper. In fact, equal parts of salt and pepper for this. I have one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of pepper. May or may not use it all. One thing I've noticed with sous vide cooking is uh, you can go a little bit lighter on the seasonings because they are in that water bath for so long that it really gives great flavor to the food. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this over top of my roast here and press it in. Then once the oil is hot, we will get it seared on all the sides. Now you can do this in a frying pan or you know, a big skillet on the stove or a Dutch oven or anything like that, it's perfectly fine. I'm just using the Ninja Foodie because it's a nice deep pot. It um, reduces splatter and I just like using it for searing big roast and things like that. Looks like I will use all of this rub, by the way. And of course you can do this recipe with, if you don't have the sous vide function on the Ninja Foodie, you can absolutely do it with a standalone Anova or another brand of sous vide immersion circulator. It works great. So once your oil is super hot, go ahead and put the roast in. So we're gonna let this sit in there and sear for about five minutes. We want nice browning on that side. Then I'll flip it, repeat the same on the other side, and then I'll get the sides and the ends done. We'll pull it back out, let it cool slightly, seal it in the bag, and we'll get to setting up the Ninja Fruity for sous vide cooking. All right, so I flipped it after about five minutes. And one thing that I noticed on the bottom is that there was some of the seasoning that actually came off. I still got good browning. I still have enough seasoning. I'm not too worried about it. However, if I was to do this again, I would actually have more oil in there. So I would go ahead and fill it up with enough oil that it covered the entire pot. I just think that that would have given that immediate sear, seared on those seasonings, a little bit better. But anyway, we live and we learn, right? So before I get the roast into the bag and show you how to do displacement um, method for sealing the bags in case you don't have a vacuum sealer, I wanted to really quick talk about the cool down of the Ninja Foodie. So because I used the Ninja Foodie to sear this piece of meat prior to sous vide cooking, I let the Foodie and the pot cool down for about 30 minutes or so. So I ran the pot under cold water, I rinsed it out, and then I also let the Foodie cool down. Because if you go right into the sous vide function 
right after using the Ninja Foodi, sometimes the temperatures are off a little bit. So that's just one thing I wanted to let you know. Now, I believe if my memory serves me correctly, it will just come, say it's come up to the temperature quicker because it's already warm and your water temperature is going to be way below what you set it. I don't think that's a real big deal when you're talking about a 36 hour cook, but if you're doing something that's a quick sous vide, you know, eggs or something like that, it may make a big difference. So just wanted to give you that bit of information. All right, I'm gonna use a vacuum sealed bag and my vacuum sealer to prepare uh, the roast to get it all vacuum sealed in before we um, sous vide cook. However, you don't have to. If you have um, a, a brand name heavy duty Ziploc freezer bag, you can do that. Some people like to double up on the bags when they go for the long cooks, the 36 hour cooks. But remember, if your sous vide function is working correctly, then you're not going to get over your, your temperature that you set. So it's not like it's going to increase in heat over a period of time. But some people just feel a little bit safer using a double bag. So you could use a double freezer bag. It's perfectly fine. Now with this, I'm going to fold over the edge and that's just to keep the bag clean. Okay. So that's just like kind of what you do when you're going to decorate a cake or something. So just to keep your hands clean and keep the bag clean. It's a little bit harder to do with a Ziploc bag, so I don't always worry about it, but you can give it a try and see if that works. And then you're gonna pick up your, your um, meat, whether it's seared or not, because you certainly do not have to sear beforehand. You can sear afterwards, it's perfectly fine. But I thought I'd give this a try. All right, then I'm gonna roll it up. Now let's say this is a freezer bag and I don't have a vacuum sealer. The way that you do the water displacement method is by putting your bag with your meat, whatever you're sous vide cooking, into the water. Now this water's cool, it has not heated up at all. I fill it with 10 cups usually for the six and a half quart Ninja Foodi. You could do 12 maybe if you're doing the eight quart. And then I just set whatever I'm cooking in and make sure that the water goes all around it. So press down. And then when I get to where I can zip it, everything's, all the air's out. See so the water's displacing the air. Then you just zip it up. You don't let your bag go under the water or water. We'll just get into it, obviously. All right, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use my vacuum sealer because it makes it really easy. And then I will show you how to tell whether or not you have enough water in for proper sous vide cooking in the Ninja Foodi. So once you have your roast or whatever you're sous vide cooking, sealed in your bag, whether it's a Ziploc or a vacuum seal bag like I did. You wanna make sure you get as much air out as you can because that's gonna prevent it from floating up. You always want your meat or whatever you're sous vide cooking to be submerged under the water. That's very important for uh, the cooking process. Now we make sure in the Ninja Foodi that we have enough water to cover it. And we simply do that by putting it right in, pushing it down, and it does look like we have enough, okay? So we're up at about 18 cups. I have a good inch or so above the beef, but I'm gonna go up just a little bit more. And the reason being is that there will be some evaporation over the 36 hours. Not a lot because we're not going at a high temperature, but there will be some, and I don't ever want the level of the water to get below the meat. So I'm gonna add in another cup, probably take it up to the max line. Now, you know, the max line is for pressure cooking, not sous vide cooking. So it's okay if you go even a little bit higher than that, as long as you don't go so high that you're overflowing the pot, obviously. All right, that looks good. Now, it doesn't look like my roast is gonna float up or anything like that, so I don't have to worry about that. If you had a lighter a food that you were sous vide cooking and it seemed to wanna float up above the surface, you can weigh it down with a plate or something else. Sometimes I'll use like a bowl and then I'll fill the bowl with water so that the water's holding the bowl down, which is holding the meat down. That works really well. 
All right, now if you're using an immersion circulator style, you are gonna go by their minimum and maximum uh, levels for your water because it's all gonna depend on the container that you're sous vide cooking with, okay? So it varies greatly. In the Ninja Foodi, I usually start off with 10 cups and then add from there. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get the Ninja Foodi heated up. So we're gonna get the water heated up. You want the valve in the back to the vent position. We'll turn the Ninja Foodi on and we will select the sous vide function. Now the temperature, you could go to 130 if you wanted, but I'm gonna take it up to 135 and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So 135 and hit start. Now what the Ninja Foodi is gonna do is heat the water that's in the pot to that 135 degrees. Then we can open up the pot and put in our meat. Now, with a 36 hour cook, even a 12 hour cook, 24 hour cook, you could put your meat in right now, okay? And just let it come up to the temperature. It's only gonna take about 35 minutes to do that or so. It might not even take that long. So you absolutely could just throw it in, set your time and move on with your day. It'll be perfectly fine. But I wanted to show in the video the temperature difference because oftentimes when you heat up your water to sous vide cook, it'll be about 10 degrees hotter than what you set when you first open the lid. And I don't want anyone to worry about that because it's not a big deal. Because guess what, as soon as you put this piece of meat, whether it's a big roast like this or a couple of chicken breast, that temperature goes down, okay? And I'm just gonna guess or maybe give some extra credit to Ninja Kitchen that they know that and they tested that and that's why it goes up about 10 degrees more. Now, more concerning would be if your sous vide temperature is below what you set, okay? So you want to definitely, before you start sous vide cooking with your Ninja Foodi, check your temperatures. So put in 12 cups of water, plug in 135, 140, whatever you wanna do. Let it heat up, take a thermo take an instant read thermometer, check the temperature. Let it go for 30 minutes. Check the temperature again with nothing in there, you know, because we don't need to waste any food. Check it again. If it's holding at what you set, then you're pretty good. You're accurate, okay? If it's in within like a couple of degrees, don't worry about it. It's not going to make enough of a difference. But if it's 5, 10, 15, 20 degrees off, you've got a problem and your sous vide um, function isn't working correctly and I would contact Shark Ninja because there's no way that you can accurately sous vide cook if you're off by that many degrees. All right, let's let it heat up and then we will get our roast in. I'll take a temperature first and then we just leave it alone for 36 hours while it cooks. All right, so once the water's heated to the temperature, it's gonna say add food for a split second and then it goes to like a 30 second countdown. Do not worry about that. If it takes you longer to get your lid off and your food in, it's perfectly fine. So no worries, we're gonna set the time afterwards anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and take a temperature. And it looks like it's around 160, okay? So that is a decent amount above what I set it for, 135. But please do not worry about it. It works out fine. Once we get this meat in here, it's gonna drop the temperature. So let's go ahead and set that in. Make sure it is submerged. You also wanna make sure that the lid can go on. Now, I don't usually try to like tuck this underneath because this would be the place where it would tend to leak if, if it was to leak at all. So I just kind of move it like that and then put the lid on. Make sure the valve is still vented, okay? And you can see now it's it defaulted to three hours. Obviously we're going 36, so we want to change this. So I'm just gonna hold down the button and let it go all the way up to 24 hours. Okay, and then hit the start button. So you can only go up to 24 hours on the Ninja Foodi. So what you need to do when you're doing a longer cook, like a 36 hour sous vide cook using the Ninja Foodi, is kind of figure out your timing so that you can add time to this. I can do that at any time though. So if I was gonna go to bed in let's say six hours, maybe I would bump it back up to the 24 and then when I get up in the morning, 
uh, adjust the time so that it's a total of a 36 hour cook time. So any way you want to do it is fine. The one thing you don't want to do though is let the time run out. Okay. So you don't want to come back 24 hours and 10 minutes later and try to restart it because you're gonna have to reheat the water, which is gonna overheat the water and it just kind of messes things up. So make sure that you get back before your time runs out and then you know set the additional time. All right, so we don't have to do anything except what I'm gonna do for you guys is in about 30 minutes to an hour, I'm just gonna take another quick temp because I wanna show you how the temperature does come back down to that 135. Oh, and speaking of temperatures, I said earlier that I was gonna set it to 135 and there was a reason for that. And the reason is that at 130, I wasn't thrilled with the texture. 133 is where I landed for my temperature using the sous vide function on my Anova immersion circulator. And it was perfect. It was perfect for roast beef. But the Ninja Foodie doesn't do those increments, so that it only goes up in five uh, degree increments. So I went with the 135 Fahrenheit for this, and it's gonna be perfect, I'm sure. So it's been just over one hour, and let me go ahead and open up the lid and take a temp. Now you guys don't have to do this at home. I'm just letting you see what the temperature is because it was considerably higher when we started out. And in all my experience using the sous vide, it rectifies itself and it did, it's 134. So we are perfect, okay? Um, now it's 135. So between, you know, 133, 137, I don't worry at all with the temperature. It's gonna cook the roast perfectly. Now we put the lid back on, make sure that it's still vented. These temperatures aren't really high enough to produce enough steam to pop the button, but I just like to always leave it on vent while we're sous vide cooking. All right, that's it. Now we can leave it alone. I won't even worry about checking it, except for probably in about 24 hours when I reset the time, um, or whatever the case may be, maybe 20 minutes or 20 hours, I'll reset the time. I might make sure that I have enough liquid in there, but there's very little evaporation because we've got a nice lid on and it's only vented here through the pin and the valve. So we're gonna have very little. I think you can go the whole 36 hours without having to add water, but if I have to add some, I'll be sure to let you know. So the Ninja Foodie turned off just about maybe three minutes ago. We missed it. We were thinking we were gonna be able to roll the cameras in time, but we didn't. So anyway, it turned off. Now I'm gonna open up the lid. I'm gonna temp the water for you. To show you that it really did keep that wonderful temperature of 132. Remember I set it to 135. Oh no, it's 133. But 133 is really what I wanted to cook it at because that's what I did in my test ANOVA recipe. So everything worked fine. I had to reset the time, of course, to get it to the 36 hours, but I never had to add water and we're still right below the max line. So we didn't lose hardly any water. So really that's very easy so you don't have to worry about adding water to it. Now we've got a good amount of liquid in here. So I'm gonna take the sous vide sirloin tip roast out and we are gonna open up the bag. I'm gonna leave the juices in. Cause you can definitely heat those up and make a delicious au jus out of them. So I'll set those over to the side for right now. The big thing that I wanted to see was whether or not the outside was too soft because that's what happened on my test recipes is it was kind of like almost pulling off and that's why I decided to sear it and I'm gonna tell you, it worked. It's much, much better. Okay, so let's slice it down the middle and then I'm gonna refrigerate it overnight so that I can use my meat slicer and make delicious roast beef.
right, let's temp it. It is 133, so that is absolutely perfect. It's gonna be delicious to make really thinly shaved roast beef. I'm so excited. All right, so let me go ahead and take one little bit off right now. You can obviously cut it with a knife, but if you have a meat slicer, definitely slice it that way. It is like melt in your mouth, fall apart, tender. Wow. It's so tender, I'm gonna take a, a thicker, a thicker slice and see. Because when I did a recipe for dehydrated um, roast beef, it was a little chewy. So let's see if we do it a little bit thicker sliced. Oh my. It is not chewy at all. Wow. You know, the only thing that I would say is that I might try to go 24 hours instead of 36 because I feel like the texture is changing a little bit, but it's unbelievably delicious. All right, so the meat uh, chilled in the refrigerator overnight, that firms it up, makes it a little bit easier for slicing, whether you're gonna use a handy dandy meat slicer or you're gonna do it by hand. Either way, I recommend putting it in the refrigerator. You can even freeze it if you wanna try to get it a little bit uh, thinner sliced. Uh, so I do that sometimes when I'm making other recipes with raw beef, I'll freeze it for a little bit. All right, so after slicing it super thin, because that's how I like it, I'm, I end up with a little piece like this that you really can't go any further with. But I wanted to show you, like I did um, before we put it in the refrigerator, just how tender this is. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh my gosh. That is actually perfect for thick sliced, you know, Sunday dinner roast beef. It is amazing. I also mentioned that the texture was a little bit softer and I've been thinking about that and I really don't know why because I went 36 hours with my Anova Immersion Circulator and the texture was beautiful. It was a little bit less done than this. Remember I went to 133 and the texture was perfect. Now, even though when I tempt the water several times in the Ninja Foodi, it was reading 133. So I was thinking I was going to get the same exact cook, but it seems like it just cooked a little bit more. So what I would do the next time if I was going to use my Ninja Foodi to sous vide a sirloin top roast, a sirloin tip roast is what I used. I might stop it at 24 hours and see if it's tender enough. And you can do that by unsealing the bag, taking a slice off, and then seeing if it's good. If it's not tender enough, put it back in, obviously. So I think I would try that. But for roast beef, it's amazing. Look at it, it's gorgeous. So I only cut half of it because I will freeze the other half. So I'll wrap it really well in saran wrap and then freeze it, and when I want some more sliced roast beef, I'll thaw it and then slice it. I prefer to freeze the meat whole instead of sliced. I think the results are better. Let's see how much we got from half of it though. Let's see. So this is a pound and five ounces, okay? So good amount. Now the price per pound for this was I believe 549 and you cannot buy 
shaved roast beef in the deli uh, for that price usually, at least not where I live. So I think it's a great way to make your own roast beef at home. If you have a lot of kids and you wanna make a lot of, of your own lunch meats, you can really save some money. I would invest in uh, a nice meat slicer though. Okay, let's make my favorite sandwich now, which is a pit beef style sandwich with an Alabama white sauce. Oh my gosh, so amazing. I have this recipe on my website and I will link to it below the video as well. So let's get some of this nice beef on here and then just, it's messy. So it's a messy sandwich. And then pour this over. Now obviously usually I have a plate, but I'm gonna let it go on my cutting board here. Look, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I already know it, right? I already know it's amazing because it's just so good and I'm gonna get totally messy and that's okay. And you can put some finely um, sliced onion, white onion on here too. I don't usually do that, but Jeff likes it that way. Mmm, oh my God. Mmm. It is so good. Mmm, mmm. I'm a mess and it's okay. Oh my gosh. Please try sous vide your tougher cuts of meat, your of beef especially. It makes a world of difference. Make the roast beef, make the white sauce, and make yourself a sandwich.